Hi everyone, so this is uh, second video for our lesson light, lesson 7.2. So you should have your notes with you, please take out and you'll be copying quite a bit for this one. So take note that if along the way you need more time to copy your notes, you just pause the video. Okay, you, you can do that. Alright, so let's begin. The, this part of, for this video, the lesson is really on reflection. So understanding what reflection is about, how do we uh, identify each part of it, the different angles that you need to know, different types of reflection. Yeah, you can read. Okay, so the first thing about reflection, you must understand what's the definition. Okay, let me put this into full screen. So, reflection is the bouncing of light rays off a surface. Of course, this is not the best definition, but this is sufficient for you to understand for now. Okay, so if you look at the torch light here, it shines here, it creates an angle, and this angle will be the same angle here, which this is called angle reflection, so it bounces off up. So we can say that this light has been reflected. Okay? So what are the different parts of a reflection? Or should I say, when I draw a ray diagram, what are the different component parts I need to know? So first thing you need to realize is that this thing called the normal, this is usually drawn in dotted lines. So this normal is always perpendicular or always at right angle with the surface. Okay, so you see this one is just perpendicular to the surface, right angle, 90 degrees. Alright, so that's the first thing you need to know. Second thing you need to know, the light coming in, we call it the incident ray. The light coming in, we call it the incident ray. The light going out is called the reflected ray. Okay, so I think it's quite obvious now. Incident coming in, reflected going out. And now the next part. This is the two things that we need to learn and make sure you remember how to identify. This is the angle of incidence. Notice the angle here, right, is from the light ray to the normal. Let's say again, from the light ray to the normal. Okay, we do not consider this part. This is not the angle. This is the angle of incidence. So similarly, the angle of reflection is from the reflected ray, reflected ray to the normal. So this one. Okay, so we have angle of incidence, angle of reflection. So you need to copy down this to make sure that you know all the different parts here of this diagram. Okay, let's move on. So what does the law of reflection say? Okay, basically why we have a law is because every time when we see light being reflected, it always follows a certain pattern. So after a while, after much uh, experiments, we confirm that it is a law, that it's all, you will always behave this way. And this behavior of light is called the law of reflection. It states that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. Angle of incidence, sometimes we, it's a very long word, we write in short, we just write I. So it's a cursive I. Okay, so I stands for angle of incidence, angle of reflection, we just put R. Okay, so in short, the law of reflection states that I is equals to R. Okay, and I mentioned again, the I and the R are measured from the normal line. In the next slide, I will explain further. So you see, right, this is my reflecting surface, this is my normal, the dotted line. So I have, a angle, I have an incident ray, I have a reflected ray. So I have four different angles here that's produced because of the light ray, the normal, and the reflected ray. Okay, Which is the angle of incidence, which is the angle of reflection. So you see here, the one I mentioned just now, this is not the angle of incidence. B here is the angle of incidence. C is the angle of reflection because it's from the ray to the normal. D here is not the angle of reflection because it is touching the surface, which is not what we want. Okay, so if you get confused, right, always go back to this slide. This will help you to understand. Okay? So now, what does the angle of uh, reflection really mean to us? So, here I have a reflecting surface, three reflecting surfaces, and the light is shining at different angles. How does the law of reflection affect the refracted rays? Okay, so if you see, right, this one is coming in, it's closer to the normal. So the angle of incidence is actually smaller. 
this is bigger, and then this one is the biggest. The angle of uh, the angle of incidence is the biggest here. So what will we result in? Okay, here you have this ray reflecting upwards. Sorry, reflecting upwards. So therefore, this angle is actually smaller. Small angle of incidence, small angle of reflection. Bigger, bigger, and then the biggest here, bigger, uh, biggest uh, angle of incidence. Here we get the biggest angle of reflection. So this is similar to like how you would, if you were to throw a ball against a wall, how it's reflected is quite similar. Okay, so just take note, small angle, small reflection, then you get bigger and it gets bigger. Okay, hope this helps you to understand better. Next, we want to go on to types of reflection. There are two types of reflection and it depends on the type of surface that you have. So this one requires you to copy quite a bit. The first kind of reflection Reflection is called regular reflection. The other one is called diffuse reflection. So the first one, if you see here, it's because of a smooth surface. Can be your mirror, can be your windows, can be your uh, even your iPhone uh, screen or your phone screen. Okay, as long as it's very smooth, generally if you put it in front of you, you can actually see your reflection. Okay, that's because when the light rays, are, the parallel light rays are actually reflected off the surface, the light rays remain parallel. See? So as long as this parallel goes in, parallels gets reflected, and then the image form is clear and undistorted. That's why you can see your face. Okay? Okay, if you don't understand, just replay this part and see what you can understand. If not, you can bring it to class. Okay, so what happens if it is a rough surface? We call it a diffuse reflection. So for example, your table top, or your chair, or something, or your wall, something that you cannot really see your reflection on. What is happening? Because if you see at a very close up uh, scale, you will see that the surface is not smooth, it's very rough. And so each light ray that comes down, right, it reflects off in different direction. Okay, depending on where the heat was angle, and therefore the angle reflection okay, will go different direction. So because they go different direction, okay, they scatter in different direction, and therefore no image is formed on the surface. It gets because it gets reflected everywhere, you don't really get to see your image. Alright, so this is diffuse reflection, just now that one is regular reflection. Okay, for this ray diagram, uh, this is practice. I want you to try to do it at home before you come to class. Okay, see what happens if this angle is 50 degrees, uh, how will you draw the ref reflected ray. Here you will need a protractor to do that. So use a protractor, put it over, figure out where's the angle you need and then draw the reflected ray. Okay, so if you want some challenge you can try this one. I think some of the, uh, the normal cat notes do not have this but if you have you can just try. If it's too difficult you can bring to class and discuss. So basically what is going to happen, this is going to have a reflection here you will go somewhere here, then reflect it, and then come back up. So you have to figure out how to draw this one. Okay, let's move on. There are other kinds of uh, reflecting surfaces. We have a convex mirror and a concave mirror. So a convex mirror, you can just remember, is something that protrudes outwards. That means it sticks out. So this is the reflective surface, it sticks out. So for example, you'll see it probably near your roads, you have this curved outwards mirror which actually can help you to see uh, the cars, incoming cars or incoming traffic. Concave mirror is the one that curves inwards. It's like a cave. So if you can, cannot remember, just remember cave is cave inwards. So convex is cave outwards. So here you see a lady. This one is kind of curved inwards, so the hand actually gets a bit bigger. So this is a concave mirror. So what is the use of a convex mirror? The feature is that it allows a larger field of vision. In other words, you can see more. So why would I want to have a convex mirror? It allows drivers to see round blind corners, like what I mentioned just now. It can be put at the side mirrors of your car so you can see. Or sometimes you will see it in shops so that people, the, the shopkeepers can actually look out for shoplifters. Yeah, so take a look out for all this. It's actually all around us. The next is concave mirror. You will see the feature is makes small objects look larger. So 
if you have gone to a dentist or going to a dentist recently, you will see that they need a mirror. So this mirror actually helps to magnify or make it bigger the back of your teeth so the dentist can see it. Okay, so magnifying surface. Okay, the final part of this, I'm going to break it down into another video. So this requires you to learn how to draw a ray diagram. Basically, what you need to know is that if there's an object given and a mirror given, and you have your eye here, where will the image be? So you need to know how to draw until it becomes like this. So this is the question, and you have to figure out how to do this one. Okay, I'll show you how to do it in the next video. Okay, that's all for this video. Any questions, just bring to class and ask. Okay, thank you.